This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Uh, we're back again on this Wednesday morning. So we were out at La Crosse uh, a few weeks ago and the Barbed Wire Museum in La Crosse, I had heard about it many times, but had, I had not had the chance to go. And it is wonderful, wonderful. Number one, it, it's really extensive. It, it's huge. And it is beautiful. It is so well done. And you, all these samples of barbed wire, and you're like, really big deal. But nothing, you know, other than the railroads, nothing changed the West like the introduction of barbed wire. So it is hugely important to our history. And um, Brad Pinka there was just amazing. He opened the museum for us so that I could get in and take pictures to share with you. Um, I think the museum opens for the season, maybe at the end of April or 1st of May, something like that. So make sure you put lacrosse on your travel plans, but they also have the Post Rock Museum there, and they've got Another the Bank rock. Museum. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, um, Rock of the Week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Frank? I mean, um. <laughs> well, we've had Teeter Rock and, oh God, Pawnee Rock. Castle and, Rock and Pawnee Rock. <laughs> a lot of rocks here in Kansas. We got, we got rocks, and then we've got um, the Point of Rocks. I know that I talked about that out at Cimarron, and um, there's just no end to the rocks we have, and they're really cool rocks. But yeah, yeah I was thinking, actually driving over today, we should just do a Rock of the Week, you know? And, and if so. you've got a cool rock that we don't know about. Now, do you know who actually invented barbed wire. <laughs> I was hoping you did because I have no idea. But. Glidden. You mean the paint guy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we, maybe we'll talk about that. So we had, he invented barbed wire and then he invented paint and then painted the barbed wire. I don't know. But that's what the story is about is we're going to go to this museum in La Crosse and we're going to look at a lot of barbed wire. I think we're ready to see the story. First, there was nothing but a vast open range, native bison roam free. Then came the settlers, and with them, a need to define their territory. Soon, miles of fences were built. Territorial disputes ensued. Rights came into question, and the character of the land began to change. When the dust settled, people were once again able to live relatively in peace. The days of the open range were gone. In La Crosse, Kansas, a museum complex celebrates a seemingly mundane chore of fencing with displays on post rock and barbed wire. Some say it was the six gun that settled the West. Others know better. It was an unusual invention that in a few short years grew into a multi-million dollar industry, barbed wire. It was a simple invention originally designed to protect a small family garden. Within a few short years of its invention, its use had spread across the prairie and eventually around the world. Barbed wire made a number of important contributions to Western history. It redefined the landscape. The legal dispute that erupted between its inventors made its way to the United States Supreme Court and set a precedent in patent law. It made men wealthy, and their wealth built public buildings and a major university. It was a simple invention that changed the direction of history, and its impact resonates today. The Kansas Barbed Wire Museum is devoted solely to the history and legend of this part of American history, often referred to as the Devil's Rope. On exhibit are over 2,400 barbed wire varieties, including samples manufactured between the years 1870 and 1890. Hundreds of antique fencing tools illustrate the inventiveness of pioneers. The museum presents interesting ways to learn about one of the Midwest's most important contributions to America's history. Dioramas of early barbed wire use, a theater featuring educational films, the Barbed Wire Hall of Fame, the museum archives room, and a research library all helped to conjure up images of settling the Midwest, range wars between homesteaders and cattlemen, and the transformation of the open prairie into America's breadbasket. Brad Penka is president of the Kansas Barbed Wire Collectors Association, and you will count yourself lucky to have him show you around. His passion is contagious. The collections are displayed so artfully, so thoughtfully, that I can promise you will never again take barbed wire for granted. Nor will you look at those picturesque rock fence posts in quite the same way. 
This museum complex is located next to the city park, so there's lots of room for the kids who can't be fenced in to run off some energy. A must for your Kansas bucket list. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotary cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now.